Um, hello, my name is Caroline Wolf, and today I am going to talk about um, the extinct species of the Placodontia. So to begin with the taxonomic information, this is a marine reptile from the Mesozoic era. Um, you can see in this picture that it resembles a reptile. So that is its classification, Reptilia, also a subgroup of the Sauropterygia. Um, this um, species was known for swimming in shallow seas. And um, I will talk about this a little bit later, but fossils have been shown or have been found in Germany, France, Poland, and China. But I will get into many of these points um, a little bit further on. First of all, the lifestyle and biology. So considering it's a marine reptile, it has an aquatic lifestyle, um, slow restricted swimming skills um, in a shallow marine environment. So the slow restricted swimming skills is um, mainly based on the fact that it's built like that. Um, so the fact that um, it uses, granted it has a long tail, so it's able to use its tail for swimming, but with the short limbs, um, that contributes to the fact that it is a, sh a slow swimming animal. Um, so these resembled the barrel bodied lizards. Um, so more specifically the marine iguana. So um, that is a species of today that it resembles. So if we were to compare it to the marine iguana, for example, um, one way they differ is the marine iguana feeds on algae where the placodonts um, ate mollusks. And so placodontia means tablet teeth. And so they are known for having these um, flat, tough teeth in order to crush the, cell, the shells. In the earliest periods of this species, um, their size was enough to keep away the top predators of the um, waters. As you can see in this picture right here, it's a pretty big animal. Um, and at the time um, when they were around, that was the shark. But as time went on, um, they ended up being um, other carnivorous reptiles ended up taking over the seas, such as the Ish Theosaur and the Nothosaur um, that ended up being much bigger than them. Um, so they had to um, evolve to protect themselves by um, developing bony plates on their backs um, that protected them while they were feeding. Um, next, their habitat, as I said, shallow seas mainly Central Europe, North Africa, the Middle East, and China. And these lagoonal habitats, like I showed in this picture right here, how you can see the shallow waters, um, that's pretty much their um, habitat was in these shallow waters, such as this picture. But anyways, um, the reason I have Hanodis example up there is because as time went on with this species, um, they evolved to be able to um, move around on land. So granted it did start, and, but those are only some examples. Um, most of them, if not the vast majority of them um, ended up staying in this um, lagoonal habitat in these shallow waters. Occurrence in the geologic time record. So, it is quite uncommon for them to be found in the fossil record. Granted, they are, like I said, the um, fossils were found in France, Poland, Germany, um, and China, but, and I don't wanna say that the time period they lived in was short because it wasn't, but they were only in that one time period and then they went extinct, but um, their records and occurrence is, um, smaller than that of a lot of the other species we have studied in this class. Um, lastly, their extinction, um, their extinction was the end of the Triassic. Um, as I had said, 
I hate using the term short lived, but I feel like with this big overview we have of this class, it I guess short lived isn't the right word, but um, there isn't much on the extinction of this group. Um, but um, this picture right here shows a um, the fossils that were found from this species. Um, and so it wasn't until the um, end of the Triassic that this group went extinct. Thank you very much.